the uh, Australian ambassador to Pakistan. It's a fairly high-risk diplomatic posting. <laughs> but um, uh, we got on well with him. We had tasted Kilgilly wines. We got involved in the bit, in, in, in purchasing a bit. Um, and um, look, I got I got overlooked for promotion at a time when I thought I should get it. So I told uh, I told the two shops the Charlie County firm to stuff their job, and I went and was going to go out on my own as a freelance consultant. And around about that time, we all, I was on the phone buying wine, and uh, it came up that the Skilly Glee was going to be sold. And I put the phone down and said, well, Spencer's selling the Skilly Glee. And Diana said, how much for? I said, I don't know. She said, well, phone back and find out. She always, she always reckons that men don't ask the right questions. <laughs> <laughs> I, always, I always say it's incredible to have a woman actually asking how much. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, we found them back and uh, it was just a seed of an idea that planted itself at the time when we, when we were ready for change. Uh, we ended up, I ended up uh, doing a management consulting feasibility study on, uh, on the, the investment possibilities. Uh, managed to convince the bank to lend us money. This is 1989, okay? Lending rates in 1989 were 19%. So we borrowed a very large amount of money at 19%. Um, we came down to auction. We got the place at auction. I showed Diana around the property the day after we bought it. <laughs> and um, a month later we turned up here. We had, we had about six hours time with the vendors and they said, right, see you later, we're gone. We were right in the deep end. We'd never seen a vine growing before, let alone, oh. let alone pruned one or picked any grapes or, you know, we've made, we've made sort of demijohns of homemade wine in our, you know, in our student days and so on, but that was about it. Um, so it was a kind of a baptism of fire. Um, we had everything done by contractors to begin with for the first few years that we were here. Um, I got jobs during vintage as a, as a vintage seller hand, so I learned how to connect hoses and uh, operate, pop, operate pumps and so on. Pop, pop pips out of expensive pieces of stainless steel equipment, which is what winemaking is mostly about. Uh, apart from getting wet. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we built a winery here, in a uh, new winery here 10 years ago. Our son now is qualified as a winemaker and he's about making wine with me. Um, as you can see, our daughter is daughter the restaurant manager. Diana, my wife, started the restaurant because I said she was she qualified as a chef by then. So we set the re restaurant up. The restaurant's been open seven days a week, 364 days a year for 21 years. Oh, wow. 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 And it's been, it's now been 19 and a half years since we had a blank day with no breakfast. So what were you doing in Stockholm? Um, my best friend uh, met a Swedish girl moved over there. So uh, yeah, I'm over there maybe every every six weeks, every eight weeks. Love it. Amazing. Great culture. For the best of its potential, even though we're then going to blend them uh, back to Do you do any sparkling shirts out of curiosity? <laughs> no, we don't. I like, I like, I like it. We've got, we've got a taste for that here. It's not often that I drink. I suppose the people around here will testify. Never. 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 This is probably one of the most fabulous selection that I've ever had in the space of a lunchtime. Thank you very much for looking after us all. That's going to go on BBC Scotland next week. Everybody wave to John. Justin, wave to John, wave to John. So you can, you can use Wait the John. later on. BBC World Services. Jesus Christ. Thank you very much.